Hi, in this video series, I'm going to show you how to use Azure DevOps for machine learning purposes. So just using the same tools like software developers now as a data scientist. Hi, I'm Sasha, and welcome to the last, the fifth video of this five video series. In the first four parts, we saw how to use Azure DevOps for machine learning. So setting up Azure DevOps, checking in our first code, checking the data quality, connecting Azure DevOps to Azure Machine Learning Services, training our model there and deploying our first API to pre-production. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to deploy it to production. And now we use Azure Kubernetes Services for that. And if you're new to this channel and want to learn more about advanced analytics, machine learning and cloud computing, don't hesitate and click the subscribe button and of course the bell to not miss anything. Before we start to add the deploy to production stage, I would like to do a quick review what we did during the last video. So we downloaded the artifacts out of the build process and we added a stage for deploy to pre-production. Within that stage, we set the Python version, added the Azure Machine Learning CLI extension, deployed the service as an Azure Container instance, and then started to do an integration test with installing the Python requirements for the testing environment, run the tests, and publish the results to the pipeline. What I would like to do today is add another stage for deploy to production. For that reason, I could either theoretically add another stage parallel to this one, but hey, first production, then pre-production. So let's add that here as a separate stage. We again start with a complete empty job and we give that stage a useful name like deploy to production. And then we start to add our tasks. And they are pretty similar to those of the last video. So we go to the agent, we set the Ubuntu version and we start to add our first task to set the Python version just to be on the safe side. So setting the Python version, setting it again to 3.6. Next would be again installing the Azure CLI extension. For that, I'm using the specialized task Azure CLI. And again, I'm picking my subscription, choose an inline script and add the command to add the Azure CLI extension for machine learning. And again, I want to give that task a useful name and call it add Azure ML CLI extension. Up next, and this is new compared to the other one, I want to create a Kubernetes service because I'm not sure if I have one. So let's create one. And for that, I'm again using an Azure CLI task, give that thing a useful name, pick my subscription, as well as creating an inline script. And let's have a deeper look at that inline script. In that inline script, I say that I want to call the Azure CLI, the machine learning extension, and I want to add or create a new compute target, in this case, an AKS. Azure Kubernetes service. And like always, I have to specify the resource group and the workspace name where I want to add that. And in this case, I also want to give that thing a useful name, so a cluster name, the size of the VMs and the count of Kubernetes agents. And those three variables need to be set, of course. So let's go to the variables section and add those three. We need to add one for the cluster name and just call it AKS, for example. Then another one for the VM size. In my case, I'm using the boosted machines, so standard boosted four CPUs. And of course, the number of machines. In my case, I pick three machines. Since I'm here in the variable section anyway, I also want to add another variable, which I need in one of the next steps. And this is pretty much the same like we used in here, service name staging. I want to set a service name for the production. And in this case, I'm calling it diabetes service AKS. So let's go back to the tasks, to the production task and continue. So after that task, either created an Azure Kubernetes service or found out that Kubernetes cluster with the same name already exists. So it will more or less, yeah, step over that task. The next thing I want to do is really doing the deployment. Let's add another task. Again, an Azure CLI task and give that task a name of that I want to deploy my machine learning service to AKS again picking my subscription and choosing an inline script. And that script is pretty much the same which we used in the last stage. So Azure ML model deploy, resource group name, workspace name, my name for production, and I'm still relying on the model I deployed in the build process. But I'm also using the YAML file for the deployment of an AKS. But like in the last step, 
the inference config and I have to state in this case again the compute target and this is an AKS and if that already exists I want to overwrite that. I also need to set a working directory because all those files are relatives passed to that working directory so let's set that I can directly pick what I need and directly the deployment folder where all those files are in which gives me a complete new path so that's fine. Okay, so set the Python version, edit the extension if they don't exist yet, created a new Kubernetes cluster or used an existing one and deployed that to AKS. So that should work, but I also want to do a integration tests again. So let's continue with that. I'm adding a bash task to again install the Python requirements if needed. And I'm picking the related script for that. So install requirements and set, since I'm using relatives pass in that script, again, the working directory to the same folder. The next task is running the tests. In Azure CLI, since I'm using also CLI commands in there, give that thing a useful name and pick a subscription. And again, an inline script. So let's have a look at that inline script. I'm using PyTests again. I'm using my integration test script, which I used already in the previous things. And then I'm exporting the results as uh, JUnit files. I'm setting the score URI. That's pretty much the same thing I did the last time. But this time I'm also setting the scoring key. And for that I'm using the Azure ML service get keys command, which gives me the keys, the security keys of the AKS, because the main difference between Azure Container Instance deployment and AKS deployment is that AKS by default generates two security keys to access that service. Otherwise I'm not able to access that. So I'm, set, I'm getting those keys in the end from the resource group, from the workspace, from the service name I just deployed and the primary key for that. And therefore I'm using that command to retrieve those keys. Since I haven't deployed an AKS and that service, I can't really test that. And last but not least, I have to do two things. First of all, set that working directory again, so to tests and integration tests. And at the last task, pretty much the same task than we did last time, to publish the test results and I still have that as a lowercase. So let's switch that. Everything else looks good so far. So let's save that, go back to the whole pipeline and do one last step. Currently, this is creating the artifacts, doing a pre-production deployment to Azure Container Instance and right after that, if that runs successfully, deploy to production. But sometimes I want to have someone look at the pre-production first. So that's why I'm setting a deployment precondition. And in this case, I'm setting it to have an approval first. So I can select a list of users or groups. In my case, I'm the only one, so I'm approving it myself. Normally I would say to, yeah, the requester of that release shouldn't be able to approve it, but hey, I'm the only one, so I should leave that unchecked. And now I'm all set. So let's save that again and create a new release. And while this is running, I will pause the video and come back as soon as this is done. And just as an intermediate step before I continue, here I am in release number 12, which is currently running. You see that it successfully deployed that to pre-production and it's asking me now to check for an approval. I already get a, got an email to approve that. So I can go in here and say, okay, I checked the pre-production version, click on approve. I'm able to do a comment and defer it, but I just want to approve that. Could also theoretically reassign that to another person. So it's approved now. And now the process continues to deploy the AKS and of course the service in the AKS cluster. So it's running and I'm again pausing that video until this has been completed. And my deployment completed. So let's have a look what happened. So I did the pre approvement and the steps ran successfully. So I used Python version, edit the extension, created a Kubernetes cluster. Let's have a look in that service. And you see it just created that successfully and called it AKS. Then deployed the service and ran some tests. And kind of have a look in the tests. So everything were passed. And let's also have a look at the files itself. As promised in the deployment, the AKS explains how it should work. For example, that the minimum replicas is one, that I want to have three Docker containers in maximum, that I enabled auto scaling, 
one container uses one of those virtual CPUs and around about a half gig of RAM. So that's the settings I'm doing in here. And the tests itself, also let's have a look at those. In the configuration, I added that key as an optional parameter. And if I'm using that, I'm setting in the end that Bira token in that service. So that's something I get back. And let's have a look at the service as well. So here I am in my resource group and uh, you can see that the Azure Container instance is already running, that it created an AKS. And when I look at my workspace on the, the compute targets, I can see that the AKS was successfully deployed. And in my deployments, I can see that both services are running. And the major difference is this is just a regular anonymous accessible service. And going back to the other one, I'm switching to the other one, I see that there has been two keys created to access that service, which I can copy or regenerate, or like I used in the Azure CLI, retrieve them through the API and use them in my upcoming command. So that should be it for to this fifth video. And uh, I also have in my previous video, the requests to give some more insights about different aspects, different tool sets and so on. So I will, with this video, definitely complete this five video series, but I would also love to give some more insights, give them more details in the upcoming bonus videos. You made it to the end of this five video series, but honestly, this shouldn't be the end. And I'm looking forward to see you again in the next videos. And please do me a favor, give me some feedback. I'm interested how you like those five videos. And I'm also interested in topics you wanna to see coming up next on this channel. So see you soon.